Repair Clinic encourages you to perform this procedure safely. In this video, we will show one or more of these icons to alert you when to use caution. Before you replace a four-way cable in your snowblower, first make sure the engine has cooled. Next, remove the wire and boot from the spark plug to prevent the engine from accidentally starting. We recommend you perform this procedure with little or no fuel in the tank. Remove the retaining clips securing the chute control rod and pull the rod free. Use a half inch socket to help remove the outer nut and bolt securing the deflector bracket. Use a 3 8 inch socket to remove the inner bolt. Use needle nose pliers to depress the retaining tabs to release the cable you're replacing from the mounting bracket. Pull out the pivot and detach the barrel end of the cable. Now pry apart the plastic retainer holding the two cables together. Next, carefully tip the snowblower forward so it rests on the auger housing. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the screws, securing the handle to the control lever. Slide off the handle. Use a 3 8 inch socket to remove the mounting nuts securing the control housing to the console. Remove the bolts securing the grounding wire. You can now pull the control housing free of the console. Now remove the screws securing the two halves of the control housing together. Separate the housing and remove the pinion gear. Next, lift out the gear shaft, remove the washer, and slide off the bevel gear. Use the half inch socket to remove the nut securing the control lever assembly. Remove the grounding wire and lift the control lever assembly off. Remove the pivot plate and detach the appropriate cable from the pivot. Depress the retaining tabs to release the cable from the housing and you can fully remove the old cable. You're now ready to install the new four-way cable. Snap the appropriate end of the new cable into place on the control housing. Insert the barrel end into the pivot and snap it into place. Replace the pivot plate and insert the control lever mounting bolt through the pivot and housing. Slide the grounding wire onto the bolt, then thread and tighten the nut.
Properly position the control lever and slide on the bevel gear with the teeth facing away from the lever. Slide on the washer and align the lower washer and gear shaft in the housing. Apply additional grease to the pinion gear if necessary and to the teeth of the bevel gear. Align the indicator marker on the pinion gear with the marker on the bevel gear. Then rotate until the pinion gear is fully seated in the housing. Join the two halves of the control housing together, making sure the control cable is routed through the access hole and control lever slot. Replace the screws to secure. Realign the control housing in the console. Replace the mounting bolts to secure. Realign the grounding wire and secure it with the bolt. Now slide the handle onto the chute control lever and secure it with the screws. Return the snowblower to its upright position. Route the new cable through the cable retainer. Insert the barrel end into the pivot and snap it into place. Reposition the pivot in the mounting bracket and snap the cable into the bracket. Replace the outer bolt and nut to secure the pivot, bracket, and deflector. Thread and secure the inner bolt as well. Secure the two four-way cables together with the plastic retainer. Confirm that the holes in the gearbox coupler are facing straight up with the chute facing forward and that the chute control lever is at the 1 o'clock position. Now insert the rounded end of the chute control rod into the gearbox coupler and the hex end into the control coupler. Secure the rod with the retaining clip. Confirm that the chute has a full range of movement. Then reattach the spark plug wire and boot, refill the tank with fuel, and your snowblower should be ready for use.